Hare Krishna. Thank you for uh, joining the class at one. Sorry, we had a last minute uh, change. So, is everybody ready for July 10th? Okay. Is everybody ready for July 10th? How many more months? Four more months. <laughs> so, oh, okay, you are ready for July 10th of 2017 then. Yes, uh, Today I think we'll start directly. So today, just for, just for today, we'll just start because there is quite something to cover. But thank you for asking. Appreciate it. We are going to start from 16th. 16th? Yes. But before that, we'll offer our Mangalacharan prayers and then we can start. Sixteen? No, we completed 16, I guess. Did we? Did we complete 16? No, we didn't. We didn't, I didn't, we didn't, I don't think we completed 15th also. Did we complete Ragatmika and Raganuga? Just think about it while we offer Mangalacharan prayers. <clears throat> Om Ajnana Timirandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Enamaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tvam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpatarubayascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayavacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे मत्समो नास्ति पापात्मा न पराधी च कश्चन परिहारे पिलज्जा मे किं रुवे पुरुषोत्तम भूमौ स्खलित भूमिरेवावलंबनम त्वयि जाता पराधानाम त्वामे शरणम प्रभो गोविंद वल्लभे राधे प्रार्थये त्वमहं सदा त्वदीयम इति जानातु गोविंदो मां त्वया सह राधा राधित राधेश राधिका प्राणवल्लभ राधा रमण वंदे तम राधिका प्रेम निर्जिता आददान स्त्रीण दंतैर्द याचे पुनः पुनः श्रीमद्रूपापदाम भोज धूलिश्याम जन्म जन्मनी रजोहम श्याम भवे भवे हरे कृष्ण so then guys you can just put her there you can just put some okay uh, so did we discuss the difference between ragatmika and raganuga bhakti we didn't right yeah that is there is an that is an important thing so shridhar prabhu we can move to chapter 15 yeah there is there will be a lot of ground to cover this will be our kind of last class so <clears throat> you can hold the questions uh, we'll divide it into two sessions uh, we'll take a break at 2:30 or so around that time and then we can have then we'll come back so if you can actually see the last few chapters uh so up till chapter 19 so which start the chapter 15 on page 119 just don't so if you look in the book it's page 119 and then 147 which is about 28 pages right there is not much 28 pages or so in 28 pages we cover five chapters 15 16 17 18 and 19 because shri la rupa goswami doesn't discuss too much about bhava and prema at length there is lot of discussion on vaidhi and we discussed at length on starting with what is pure devotion what are the characteristics of pure devotion then there is sadhana bhakti sadhana bhakti is divided into two which is vaidhi and raganuga so till now we discussed about vaidhi all the rules and regulations and uh, all those things were discussed till the uh, 14th chapter the 15th and 16th chapters discuss about raganuga bhakti so raganuga bhakti um, as we discussed earlier is a spontaneous attraction to krishna and that is not done because i have to obey certain things it is done out of spontaneous attraction for krishna but before we start with raganuga shri la rupa goswami discusses ragatmika bhakti so the difference between ragatmika bhakti we will just go ahead and read a little bit i'll just read the first two paragraphs on page 5 on chapter 15 page 119 those who are following the book examples of spontaneous devotional service can easily be seen in krishna's direct associates in vrindavan the spontaneous dealings of the residents of vrindavan in relationship with krishna are called ragatmika these beings don't have to learn anything about devotional service they are already perfect in all regulative principles and have achieved the spontaneous loving service of the supreme personality of godhead for example the cowherd boys who are playing with krishna do not have to learn by austerities or penances or yogic practice how to play with him they have passed 
all tests of regulative principles in their previous lives, and as a result, they are now elevated to the position of direct association with Krishna as his dear friends. This spontaneous attitude is called Ragatmika Bhakti. Srila Rupa Goswami has defined Ragatmika Bhakti as spontaneous attraction for something while completely absorbed in thoughts in it, with an entire intense desire of love. Devotional service executed with such feelings of spontaneous love is called Ragatmika Bhakti. Devotional service under the heading of Ragatmika can be further divided into two. One category is called the sensual attraction and the other is called relationship. So, Ragatmika, the Sanskrit meaning of Ragatmika is that it is completely covered. Atma means soul and Raga means attachment or love. But whose whole soul is love for Krishna. That is called Ragatmika. They do not know anything except love for Krishna. And Krishna doesn't know anybody else except those kind of devotees who are in complete love with him. So that is called Ragatmika. And the reason even Ragatmika is brought up is, we will see why that is. And then as Rupa Goswami says, there are two types of Ragatmika Bhakti. One is called sensual or Kama Rupa. The other is called Sambandha Rupa or a relationship with Krishna. So, and in this, uh, in, in, in this connection, Um, so, Sridhar Prabhu, please pull up 7th Canto, 1st Chapter, 30th Verse. This is an important verse that we'll just read. Kindly repeat after me. Kama dveshad bhayat snehad Yata bhaktyeshvare manaha Aveshata dagam hitva Bahavas tad gatim gataha Simantini Vataji, the translation, please, of, of the verse. Many, many persons have attained liberation simply by thinking of Krishna with great attention and giving up sinful activities. This great attention may be due to lusty desires, inimical feelings, fear, affection, or devotional service. I shall now explain how one receives Krishna's mercy simply by concent concentrating one's mind upon him. Next verse, please. So, how many types of relationships are mentioned here? Five, right? Fear, lusty desires, inimical feelings, fear, affection and devotional service. Next verse, please. Kindly repeat. Gopya kamat bhayat kamso Dveshat chaitadya yon ripaha Sambandha Drishna Yasnehad Yuyam Bhaktya Vayam Vibho Abhishek Translation My dear King Yudhishthira, the gopis by their lusty desires, Kamsa, by his fear, Shishupal and other kings by envy, Yadus by their familial relationship with Krishna, you Pandavas by your great affection for Krishna, and we the general devotees by our devotional service have obtained the mercy of Krishna. Thank you. So, here the, this chapter which is called of Ragatmika Bhakti or spontaneous attraction for Krishna, these are the different ways of, of being in that but one question here it might be asked, and Srila Prabhupada goes at length to discuss that. One question might be asked, hatred and fear, how can they be part of Ragatmika Bhakti? Or, you know, why is that it is included? 
Rupa Goswami, he clarifies that point saying that they do not fall under the realm of pure devotion. Now, and somehow or other, if you think of Krishna, then the result is beneficial. Kamsa and Shishupal, in front of everybody's eyes, actually merge into body of Krishna. And they attain Brahman liberation. But other devotees, they actually got to enjoy with Krishna in a more personal fashion. Narada or Yadus and then uh, the gopis of Vrindavan. So they all had an intimate personal relationship with Krishna. So the whole idea that is kind of uh, described in this 15th chapter is um, that there are two types of attraction, sensual, Kama Rupa and Sambandha Rupa. They are mentioned here. So first is the Sambandha Rupa is mentioned. So those four are there, right? Envy, fear, by devotional service, by friendship. They are all Sambandha Rupa or in relationship with Krishna. But Kama Rupa is taken as a separate, whole together other um, relationship with Krishna. The reason for that is that the gopis' activities with Krishna in Vrindavan, they constitute a whole science in of itself. Just Madhurya Rasa with Krishna is a whole science in of itself. And Srila Rupa Goswami says, in this book I won't discuss much because that is confidential. I have reserved that whole talk for another book, Ujwala Nilamani. Thank you. And this he says, that I'm discussing very briefly here. So the whole idea of Ragatmika Bhakti is mentioned here. And then Srila Rupa Goswami comes back to Raganuga, saying that what is Raganuga Bhakti in wake of Ragatmika? Same with Ragatmika, there are two types of Raganuga Bhakti, which is again Sambandha Rupa and Kama Rupa. Then it, it goes like that. So the 15th chapter is a Ragatmika, the Sambandha Rupa and the uh, Kama Rupa and their divisions. With the basis is this verse, these two verses. Like how did they achieve love for Krishna? And the 16th chapter, um, goes on to describe, I think one point, uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, uh, talk, turn to page, chapter 16, if we may. So please read that chapter. Uh, I want an honest answer that are we ready for July 10th? I don't want an answer now. I know the answer, I don't want it now, but give a serious thought to it and then let me know. Because um, the only prerequisite if we ever want to change, is that not one devotee should object. If even one devotee objects, I'm not going to change. Otherwise, we'll keep July 10th. This is a vast topic. I want the devotees to learn this topic, to relish that, not feel under pressure. But time and again it happens that you try to cram before exam. It will not work with nectar of devotion. Impossible. Impossible. You will feel frustrated. You want to throw this book out and just run away from the whole exam. This is not fault of this book. It is mainly the fault of our uh, habit of cramming before the exam. One week before exam, all I need is one week. And Rupa Goswami took 11 years to write this book. <laughs> not 11, actually it's like multi-year, 7 or 11, I don't remember. Something like, it's a multi-year book that he wrote. Deeply being absorbed in love of Radha and Krishna, after receiving the complete mercy of Mahaprabhu, he wrote this book in the land of Raja, meditating on, on Radha and Krishna, he wrote this book. So, we are doing a grave injustice by trying to cram before exam. And I personally experienced it, so I didn't mean to in any way offend the devotees. <laughs> what? All right, um, let's turn to page 125, uh, okay, actually, you know what, Kuladvi Prabhu, please read the paragraph uh, starting with eligibility of spontaneous devotional service. Who can be Raganuga Bhakti? This is one, one point. One point from a practical example is that 
we do sadhana. But what is the line between sadhana and raganuga? Can I stop chanting, thinking I am on a spontaneous level of attraction for Krishna? Maybe you are. You might you might think one day that you see the 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 beautiful murti of Krishna, and then you start crying. Tears might come to your eyes. Or you are thinking of Krishna. Sometimes tears might come, or you find some goosebumps sometimes when you hear about Krishna that come on your body. Maybe you decide now I am a raganuga bhakta. I might not need actually to do it. We have that doubt, you know. This is Rupa Goswami says here. Spontaneous devotional service, no rules and no regulations. Maybe should I, you know, even offer Krishna Prashad? He knows I am on this Raganuga stage. <laughs> <laughs> How? Why? So this is a very, very uh, important thing that we need to consider. So please read the first paragraph. Eligibility for spontaneous devotional service. Persons desiring to follow in the footsteps of such eternal devotees of the Lord as the Brishnis and Vrindavan denizens are called Raganuga devotees, which means that they are trying to attain to the perfection of those devotees. These Raganuga devotees do not follow the regulatory principles of devotional service very strictly, but by spontaneous nature they become attracted to some of the eternal devotees such as Nanda or Yashoda and they try to follow in their footsteps spontaneously. There is a gradual development of the ambition to become like a particular devotee and this activity is called Raganuga. Okay, next paragraph, next devotee. We must always remember, however, uh, <coughs> that such eagerness to follow in the footsteps of denizens of Raja, Vrindavana, is not possible unless one is freed from material contamination. I'll stop you there. So what is the prerequisite Shila Prabhupada says here? So that is a, a, a more important check with ourselves before we can even think, maybe I am a Raganuga. Okay, go ahead, Prabhu. In following the regulative principles of devotional service, there is a stage called Anardha Nivritti, which means the disappearance of all material contamination. Sometimes, someone is found imitating such devotional love, but fa factually, he is not freed from anarthas or unwanted habits. It has been it seen that a so-called devotee proclaims himself a follower of Nanda, Ishoda, or the gopis. While at the same time his abominable attraction for mundane sex life is visible, such a manifestation of div divine love is mere imitation and has no value. When one is actually spontaneously attracted to the loving principles of the gopis, there will be found no trace of any mundane contamination in his character. Thank you. So this is where Mahaprabhu came to exhibit. He was always meditating on the activities of gopis of Vrindavan. In fact, at the latter stages of his pastimes, day and night he was completely absorbed in the mood of Radharani. He was, he was like thinking himself to be Radharani and Krishna as his lover. And he himself was Krishna, but he was, that was his mood of Mahaprabhu. But when you could see actually, he wouldn't even go anywhere near any women. In fact, women were supposed to offer obeisances to him from a distance afar, he wouldn't even go near. One day it so happened, I know, I, I think the devotees might know the story, but I'll tell. So one day, um, one lady was singing the beautiful pastimes of Krishna in the temple of Lord Jagannath, and Mahaprabhu heard that song, and then his mind became so absorbed that he lost himself in a trance and he wanted to actually embrace that singer who was singing the pastimes. And then Govinda stopped him. And Mahaprabhu said, thank you for stopping me. If I had touched that woman, I would have given up my life. He was strict with himself and he would be strict with his followers also. So, there is that dichotomy. That is why 
without permission of your guru your shiksha gurus or your mentors one shouldn't indulge in reading about the past times of krishna uh, without having the proper blessings yeah good yeah good bro next paragraph therefore therefore in the beginning everyone should strictly follow the regulative principles of devotional service according to the injunctions of scriptures and the spiritual master only after the stage of liberation from material contamination can one actually aspire to follow in the footsteps of the devotees in vrindavan so even if one is unable to strictly follow then one should at least know that i am a very fallen person and pray to krishna to give strength everybody of us can't be perfect in an instant especially here in this land of uh, us where where it is so much of disturbance so much of work pressure so much of so many things happen that that cause one to to not be sometimes strict that's it's while that's a problem and i personally say i have that problem but one can at least acknowledge the fact that i am on this plane and that is the beauty of reading nectar of devotion at least we know where we are from a scientific perspective we know where we are and then where we should go but if you don't even have a map you think you have reached the goal when that when you look at the map you see that goal is 1000 miles away but if you don't have any knowledge then you think you are in the goal see the difference so at least when we read nectar of devotion we know krishna there is so much of road ahead of me there is so much of path and this is the goal that that i have to reach and the at least but the beauty is you become clear at heart you say yes at least i know where i am i'm confidently i can go to that particular path because that is mentioned in nectar of devotion does it make sense the go- whole idea is not to depress the devotees but to give them a firm sense of goal and a firm sense of realistic perception of where they are in their devotional path and how to get there questions okay yes, so uh, oh, at what stage we can consider that somebody got rid of the anartha nivritti is it well, it can be defined like when somebody doesn't get any taste in material things even he's doing it something like they have to put like yeah. even somebody is doing material activities but he is not getting test is he purified completely at that stage one of the things i suggested was internally one knows where he or she is at externally to judge others that is a little more tricky because one really doesn't know based on the external status the other point is unless you are even though other person may be advanced unless you are there you might not even know that symptoms i'll tell you an example we know all this story but i'll just give a different perspective you know the story of um, gadadhar pandit and mukunda meeting excellent thank you yeah. and was pundrik vidyani the dressed in a lion cloth in a hut he was in the most opulent possible circumstances now we all know the story of how gadadhar pandit had doubts and how mukunda started singing the famous verse anybody credit bonus points for telling me which verse it is thank you yes aho bakiyam sthana kala kutam it's a tongue twister if you want to memorize one of the tongue twister verses of bhagavatam 3223 let's memorize let's let's sing that verse why not just for the sake of i think i am right in the verse number i'm not sure yes okay kindly repeat after me अहो बकीयम स्तनकालकूटम अहो बकीयम स्तनकालकूटम 
jigam sayada papaya yattapya sadhvi jigam sayad ap <laughs> that's why i said it's tongue twister anyway i figure it out lebhe gatim datruchitam tatonyam ಜಿಗಾಪಾಯ ಸಾಧ್ವಿ ಕಂವಾದಯಾಳು ಶರಣ ವ್ರಜೇಮ ಐಲ್ ರೀಡ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಎಲಾಸ್ ಹೌ ಶಲ್ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಮರ್ಸಿಫುಲ್ ದನ್ ಹೀ ಹೂ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ದ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮದರ್ ಟು ಅ ಶಿ ಡೇಮನ್ ಪೂತನ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ಶಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಫೇತ್ಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ ಡೆಡ್ಲಿ ಪಾಯ್ಸನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹರ್ ಬ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ ಇನ್ ಜಡ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ಪುಂಡರಿಕ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾನಿಧಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಎಲಿವೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೋಲ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಸಮ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಫೈಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಸೇ ಏ ತೋ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ರಿಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಎಂಜಾಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹೀ ಹಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಎಮೋಷನಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೀ ದ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಷನ್ so so my point here is to judge others um, there could be few symptoms for sure but we should take the yardstick of aishishika prabhu you know this is their steadiness and their devotion so uh, because the other point here is that raganuga bhakti is a constant feeling of love to serve krishna in a particular capacity one day you don't wake up saying that oh i am in vatsalya ras the other day you don't wake up saying you are in madhurya ras the third day no 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 i might be a friend of krishna because that is a better cho- choice that is not raganuga <laughs> it's out of when you advance in devotional service your swarup or your natural attraction to krishna in a particular taste comes out and that remains constant then you actually seek out the devotees who are engaged in such activities and you want to serve under them to know the exact science of serving krishna it's a science please understand that security service protects the president of united states yes or yes yes do they do they make, make plans daily or hourly they have no rule book it's okay whatever you know we have to we have to do something he has to protect it we'll do something <laughs> if you open their book you will be amazed by the amount of level of details they have in securing the president of united states or in serving the president of united states there is a whole book president of united states with all due respect is is nothing but then to serve krishna you think it's willy nilly chalega whatever <laughs> there is a science and that that needs to be learned so that eligibility will come so it is a little bit answer your question yeah but prabhu my question was more uh, inclined to judging your own self like you know, your you, your own self uh, one thing i found is that how much detached are you from matter how much detached if you, so if there is a detachment then there is advancement if there is an increased taste to hearing and chanting then there is advancement at least from that aspect we can judge if you go actually analysis or retrospection is that go back 10 years ago or 5 years ago you you try to analyze what were your desires what were your weaknesses what was the one thing you know whether it is licit or illicit doesn't matter what was that one thing that you were completely under control and you couldn't give up and in devotional service now when you come how are you able to tolerate it are you able to withstand that urge not give up completely maybe maybe not i don't know but at least you are able to withstand that urge and in future you are able to control that and then in, in then after that it is like you are disgusted with the same exact desire that people were 
Prabhupada would, would actually do that. He would, he, he would say, you try to enjoy with many women, you'll never get pleasure. What sort of enjoyment? And he would spit, literally he spit. I, I remember in, in the mic, he just said, thu. So the thing is, Srila Prabhupada, so you can see that 10 years ago, when you see a poster of, of, of a, a, a beautiful woman, how would your mind react? Now how is it reacting? In future, how will it react? That is one way of, sure way of saying advancement. And Shla Prabhupada, this is not a, a I, I made up. Shla Prabhupada writes, one can know one's own advancement by how much one is getting detached from matter. And if you read Bhagavatam third canto, where you see that, that everything in this material world, the fan and everything is just a combination of atoms. They are just being held together by the power of the Lord. Then you will really realize like that Matrix movie. This is all like, you know, virtual. And you'll say, what, what am I doing here in this virtual thing? The whole thing is so temporary and fleeting. What is my position? What, what am I really doing here? You'll wake up, like, what am I doing here? Anyway, sorry for the long answer. Forgive me. Thank you, Bobby. It was a very good answer. Actually. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, um, <clears throat> More questions because we we need to complete uh, the Raga Anuga Bhakti. Jitendra, thank you for joining. <laughs> Welcome. All right. Um, anything else? Sambandha Rupa, basic qualification. Yes. Oh, maybe a little off topic, but maybe somewhat related. So, in the, like, you know, Sakharas, Madhuraras, so there is also two parts, right? Vishrambha and Aishwarya. So, is basically, Ragatmaga Bhakti would be basically the Madhurya aspect of all the different viruses. Is that true? Ra can you please repeat the question, Prabhuji? So, there is... Um, you know, Shantras, Dasyaras, uh, Sakharas, Ityadi. But they have two subdivisions also, Aishwarya and Vishrambha. Vishrambha? Vishrambha meaning they will not accept that it is actually Lord. Yes, yes. Aishwarya means they will accept. Actually, it is there. Um, we'll come to that point. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead with your question. So I was wondering, so the ragat, Ragatmika Bhakti would be the Vishrambha aspect of the five ras, panch rasas. Uh, um, Vishrambha means mixture? Vishrambha means… I am not getting the Sanskrit connotation. Means they will not accept his Lord. They will not… They, they will not accept his Lord. Like it's very spontaneous. It's like the spontaneous aspect. So for… Hmm. Okay. So Vatsalaras, so Vatsalaras, for example, Deviki is, um, Deviki is in Aishwarya Vatsala. Correct. And whereas uh, Yashoda Mata is in Vishrambha Vatsala. Correct. I see what you mean. Correct. Okay. Mm. So the Pandavas are also in that, in front, in front, in, as far as Sakya goes. Sometimes they are, they are both. That's why in 11th chapter, what does Arjuna say? Oh, I used to say, hey Yadava, hey Madhava, come, we used to sit together, I used to joke with you, I used to actually make fun of you in front of others, now I see you. Please forgive me. So, you know, previously it was covered, now it is uncovered. So, yes, there are two. There are two. In fact, it is said that even in the Madhuryaras, the queens who want to actually, there are two types, Parakya and Swakya. And then, if you want the position of wise and opulence, then you will be sent to Dwarka, or you will position it in Dwarka. Whereas, if you want, like, <coughs> spontaneous, then it is in Vrindavan. Yes. <coughs> but that aspect is um, rather concealed here. Rupa Goswami, when he goes to the southern and the western parts, when it is discussed more at length, then you will get all those details. Right now, it is just, Bhakti Shastri is, it's a, it's a trailer. What is love? And that's it. <laughs> but what are the dynamics of love? How the love progresses? The word rasa is something we haven't discussed so far in, in, in totality in, in these 19 chapters. What exactly is rasa? And what constitutes rasa? So what are these emotions? 
So, does, if you are in love of Krishna, you have only one emotion, always crying. Or do you have multiple emotions? Or do they come together? Do they, do they, when do they show up? And what sort of emotions do they show up? So those are the kinds of things that are discussed in the southern part, in the western part. But there are few indications, Rupa Goswami, that's why he is, he has spent so much time on sadhana, but the last four uh, chapters or five chapters is very, very compressed. So it's what is Ragatmika, what is Raganuga, who follow Ragatmika Bhaktis, there are few divisions, subdivisions, and then Bhava and then Prema. So, yeah. Then um, let's go a little bit more into that, continue with that particular purport. Uh, who's next? Page 126. It is said by Sri Rupa Goswami, when one is actually liberated from material contamination, he can always remember an eternal devotee in Vrindavana in order to love Krishna in the same capacity. And developing such an aptitude, one will always live in Vrindavana, even within his mind. The purport is that, if it is possible, one should go and physically be present at Vrajabhumi, Vrindavana, and be engaged always in the service of the Lord, following the devotees in Vrajadhama, the spiritual realm of Vraja. If it is not possible, however, to be physically present at Vrindavana, one can meditate anywhere upon living in that situation. Wherever he may be, one must always think about life in Rajadhama and about following in the footsteps of a particular devotee in the service of the Lord. Thank you. Next. Okay, before that, I have a question. Are the, Rup are the six Goswamis of Vrindavan they are, are they Ragatmika Bhaktis? Bhaktas means eternally, eternal companions. Also. Then we hear that Sankhya Purva Kanama Gana on TV. Every day they would offer fixed number of obeisances. They would chant fixed number. They were very regulative in their thing. Sanatan Goswami, for example, was what was anybody remembers? He's regular. Govardhan Parikrama. Thank you, Mother Govinda Prabhu. And then when he was very old, then Krishna said, you know, he gave his own footprint saying that you circumambulate this. And uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, he said, fixed number of obeisances to the Vaishnavas. Why were they doing that? They are eternal liberated souls. Really, they didn't have to do all these regulative things. Yes, Aprame. Set examples. Set examples, thank you. But they really, yeah, that is true to a certain extent, but they didn't need to. Because everybody accepted them as like completely authoritative. And yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thing is like by doing those services, they were actually getting that same pleasure that the Ragatmika Bhaktas were doing in Vrindavan. Like while they are chanting, they are meditating the Leela's pastimes. And they are in that service. Like we see also Naratam Das Thakur, he was meditating, chanting and he was participating in the Leelas. Thank you. So, um, please read the next paragraph and then it will be clear. A devotee who is actually advanced in Krishna consciousness, who is constantly engaged in devotional service, should not manifest himself even though he has attained perfection. The idea is that he should always continue to act as a neophyte devotee as long as his material body is there. Activities in the devotional service under regulative principles must be followed even by the pure devotee. But when he realizes he act his actual position in relationship with the Lord, he can, along with the discharging of regulative service, think within himself of the Lord under the guidance of particular associate of the Lord and develop his transcendental sentiments in following that associate. 
Clear? So, even for the most advanced devotee, there is internal and then there is external. Internally, they have a certain mood of relationship with Krishna, but externally, they are still in the form of, they are doing their sadhana. Which means, sadhana is not exclusive, sadhana and raganuga are not exclusive. Vaidhi and raganuga, okay, vaidhi, 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 raganuga now. I am different. No, I am no longer Vaidhi Bhakta. What are you talking? It's lower position. No, it's pure devotion, whether Vaidhi or Raganuga is equally important. Just like if I have become a CEO of the company, then I won't be the janitor. <laughs> it's a fact, like, you know, from janitor people have become CEO of the company, but you don't want to go back doing janitorship. That is, the devotional service is not like that. Hearing and chanting or sadhana or vaidhi, so, you know, they, they are, they are equally form. So, no matter how advanced one is, that is another sign, is that they never give up their regulative things, though they don't uh, have to remember the Lord only through sadhana. Because the idea of doing sadhana is, at some few hours of day, I have to remember Lord. Yes or yes. But if I am my, I'm already always absorbed in thought of Krishna, then why do I need to do sadhana? Yet I do sadhana. Because sadhana or not, it is the way of remembering Krishna. So they don't see any difference between Vaidhi and Raganuga in that sense. Does it make clear? Yes, Satya Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So the question I have is, um, they do that because they are asked to do by their gurus or Krishna? I mean, why do they do that? I mean, why do they who, still… Who do they… People, uh, devotees who have achieved the Ragatmika Bhakti stage, why do they still follow uh, uh, all the regulative principles? Because as long as they have an external body, there are two reasons to this. As long as they have, the advanced devotee never thinks that he is advanced. The Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, please tell the verse, Shamaru Prabhupada, Muise, yeah, you know that verse, yes, go ahead. He is telling in Adilila, like insignificance of himself. Jagai Madai Hoite Muise Papishto, Purishe Kit Hoite Muise Logishto. I am more sinner than Jagai and Madai. I am more abominable low than the warm of the stove. So, so he, he feels like that. So, so that is the one aspect. They never think that they are advanced. Forget, forget the most advanced of all devotees. The highest devotee of Krishna is Radharani and she says, I have no love for Krishna. I really have no love for Krishna. And Mahaprabhu, you know the story in Antya Leela, that Mahaprabhu was standing next to Garuda Stamba every day he would, and then a woman was so eager to see Lord Jagannath, she didn't even realize it, but she climbed the Garuda Stamba and put one, one leg on the shoulder of Mahaprabhu and watched Jagannath. And then Govinda was right behind him, he said to the woman, hey, come down, come down, here, just what are you putting? And then you know what Mahaprabhu said, Govinda, you've done the right thing. He she put, how can, how dare she put? He said to Govinda, O oh, uncultured person, please don't stop this woman from seeing Lord Jagannath to her full satisfaction. In fact, I wish I had that same eagerness to see Lord Jagannath as this woman. And I pray at the dust of her feet that may I get that attraction to see Lord Jagannath. And that was Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of God and Himself. So their humility is such that they don't think that they are advanced in devotional service. So that's why they do the, the first aspect. The second aspect is that as long as they have that, that body, they, they perform their activities. As Aparamaya said, to a to, to certain extent to set example themselves. But that set to example themselves probably wouldn't be applied for like, you know, bhajananandis. For example, Gaur Kishwa Das Bhavaji, he had nothing to prove or set example. He, had, he didn't have any desire to take on any devotees. And so, but the thing is, they still do that absorption. So, th on those Babaji's on that level, they are really not on the same level as 
in terms of, though, so one should never imitate their kind of activities. Then there is a serious problem because they are really on a different level. Yes, Prabhu. So Prabhu, here it is saying transcendental sentiments in following that associate means one of these four, right? So at that stage, do they have to choose? No choose. No, 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 no choosing. No choosing. There is no choosing here. Right, Prabhu. But like in that in that stage, the question I have is. Krishna will make arrangements. So, as you perfect your devotional service, you, thi you think that or your relationship with Krishna is that of a cowherd boy, then automatically, you know, Yoga Maya or Krishna will make arrangements in such a way. That, that that person will know that. Yes, you will be going to Vrindavan, will be serving or anywhere where the Lord is in this material world, enacting his pastimes, you are there, you are trained up and then you will go back to spiritual world. So, when those advanced pure devotees know that stage, like if they are in the Sakya Rasa, then they will have to find a devotee who is already in that and follow in their footsteps? Like what? Don't what have it? to find, it will be automatically arranged. Your eagerness will take you to Vrindavan. Kopakumar in Brihad Bhagavata Amrita, his position was in Vrindavan. He went to so many places, his heart not, not satisfied. Nobody took him there. He, he will get there. Krishna will make those arrangements. Our, our uh, thing right now is that we, we just do our sadhana and when we advance, these things will be automatically revealed to us. We don't try to artificially imitate or try to search out. So those don't need to, it will come, it will come on its own. Based on our own surrender to Krishna, Krishna will make arrangements. So, that's, these are all like, you know, it's going to take. And uh, good that you brought up, because we'll read then one more paragraph and then, uh, actually two more paragraphs, we'll do that. This is probably important that we should, uh, we should read. We'll read this chapter and then we'll stop. 17, 18 and 19, we'll come and do later. Go ahead. In this connection, we should be careful about the so-called Siddha Pranali. The Siddha Pranali process is followed by a class of men who are not very authorized and who have manufactured their own way of devotional service. They imagine that, becomes, they, imagine that they have become associates of the Lord simply by taking themselves like that. This external behavior is not at all according to the regulative principles. The so-called Siddha Pranali process is followed by the Praktra Sahajyas, or a pseudo-sect of so-called Vaishnavas. In the opinion of Rupa Goswami, such activities are simply disturbances to the standard way of devotional service. Balram, next paragraph. Sri Rupa Goswami said that learned acharyas recommend that we follow the regulative principles even after the development of spontaneous love for Krishna. According to the regulative principles, there are nine departmental activities, as described above, and one should specifically engage himself in the type of devotional service for which he has a natural aptitude. For example, one may have a particular interest in hearing. Another may have a particular interest in chanting, and another may have a particular interest in serving in the temple. So these are any of the other six different types of devotional service, remembering, serving, praying, engaging in some particular service, being in a friendly relationship, or offering everything in one's possession, should be executed in full earnestness. In this way, everyone should act according to his particular taste. So that's the point. When we say giving up of regulative principles in the advanced stages, a devotee may actually not be chanting, but be completely engaged in reading Bhagavatam again and again. We hear the story of Mahaprabhu reading Bhagavatam in the association of? But we don't have a lot of information on Gadadhar Pandit Prabhu chanting his rounds extensively day and night. Yes or yes? That was his, that, that, that was he, again and again, he spontaneously incarnation of Radharani, but his attraction was to Bhagavatam. And then he would just, that was his, that was his mood. And we don't uh, hear of Haridas Thakur seriously discoursing on the Bhagavatam topics, because he had no time. 
Did Haridas Thakur even know any verses? <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, in the neophyte stage, you question like that. When did he have time to read books? <laughs> he is not, because that, that was his thing. So, but this is an advanced stage. You can't use it for our yardstick saying that, you know what, I'll read Bhagavatam two hours a day, I'll stop chanting Mahamantra. <laughs> because Prabhupada gave us that, that stricture and the sadhana involves in obeying the spiritual master without questioning his order, then you better chant. So see the logic, how it kind of can get varied. So, <laughs> so that's where it is mentioned here. At advanced stage, then you get really attracted to something. All right. So, um, the ragatmika bhakti is of two types, which is the conjugal love, the kama rupa and sambandha rupa. Same is with raganuga bhakti. So, we'll discuss first the conjugal love, which will also uh, answer a little bit of our Gauravji's question. And then, um, then we can go ahead. So, I think it's a good idea that we read this complete chapter. Any devotees have objection to that? I don't know. It's the last class, so this is another thing. I don't know, for those who completed their Bhakti Shastri with this, uh, congratulations, but those who don't, we have an option of doing it on Saturdays instead of Sundays. Sunday afternoon is a prime time to sleep. I'm just joking. <laughs> but but you, 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 you actually, because you, you, go, you have like a whole Saturday of service and everything, Sunday afternoon is, is a tough thing. So your austerity is much appreciated by Krishna. So, we can move our classes to Saturdays in the, in the afternoon. So, have prashadam, a little bit less water. Yeah. I have a question. How many distribute, book distributors actually attended all the classes on Sunday? <clears throat> okay, that, we, thank you. We, we raised a point. We won't uh, take answers. Or we don't demand answers. <laughs> but I'm deeply appreciative. Uh, and I'm so grateful that even if you come just for one class throughout the semester, I'm grateful. Because you are doing services to, 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 to do other services, so I'm not judging. I'm in front of the DT, so I can't tell lies. I'm not judging. I'm not, I understand. And that's why I didn't make it a rule that 90% attendance, otherwise you're not eligible for writing the exam. I could have made a rule like that, but I understand. But the thing is this, I don't want devotees to cram nectar of devotion. If, okay, again, think about it. I don't want too much thinking. But if I change the date, every one of you has to promise that you are going to read every day till the exam date. Moving the exam 10 years later doesn't make because 10th year, 9th <laughs> month or 11th <laughs> month you start. It really doesn't solve the problem. So, I can postpone the exam date, but the only thing is, I need that assurance that you are going to read seriously every day, set aside time, 15, 20 minutes, understand, read, because this, if you can grasp, your life is successful. You know what the goal of life is. Why are you doing all these things? What is it that, that love of God, it, love of God, it, what is this love of God? It? You know, I get better love from my girlfriend or my wife or <laughs> husband or spouse or from my dog. <laughs> I'm not kidding. One of my colleagues actually came up to me and said, I wish I will be my own dog next life. I want to come back as dog. He was getting such rasa from dog that he doesn't want to come, come back as a human being. He wants to come back as a dog. So, if you don't grasp it and if you think this is super boring, then it's because you didn't read it carefully. That's what, th this is the problem. So, postponing the exam won't solve the problem. It's internally you taking a vow, saying I'm going to read, going to absorb, I'm going to at least relish. If not, 
I'll be totally confused. That's fine. Because at least you read and you had questions. <laughs> so, so, so if you, if you ask me for postponing, then I need that from you. It's not a quid pro quo. It's a quid pro quo, not a one-way traffic. Because mm -hmm. I, I, otherwise, I'll be at fault. You know you, nobody will read. Why are you postponing? And if you ask me that, somebody asked me a question, I have no answer. Yes, bro, you're right. I'm a total fool. Which I am anyways. <laughs> so think about it. All right. Um, Balram, what do you think? You need more time for exam? <laughs> I like your answers, Balram. Excellent answer, actually. <laughs> Either here nor there. Nice. I like it. <laughs> if the devotees ask the question, will I pass? Maybe. <laughs> All right. Who so, is next? Conjugal love. Devotional service following in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan or the queens of the, at Dwarka is called devotional service in conjugal love. This devotional service in conjugal love can be divided into two categories. One is indirect conjugal love, the other direct. In both of these categories, one has to follow the particular gopi who is engaged in such service in Goloka Vrindavan. To be directly attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in conjugal love is technically called Keli. This Keli performance means to directly join with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are other devotees who do not wish direct contact with the Supreme Person but who relish the conjugal loving affairs of the Lord with the gopis. Such devotees enjoy simply by hearing of the activities of the Lord with the gopis. This development of conjugal love can be possible only with those who are already engaged in the following the regulative principles of devotional service, specifically in the worship of Radha and Krishna in the temple. Such devotees gradually develop a spontaneous love for the deity and by hearing of the Lord's exchange of loving affairs with the gopis, they gradually become attracted to these pastimes. After this spontaneous attraction becomes highly developed, the devotee is placed in either of the above mentioned categories. So, the conjugal love is of two types where they want to enjoy with Krishna directly where they don't where they want to enjoy with Krishna indirectly so those are the two types here go ahead yes Roji, in this in each and every section we have this different sections right like in this particular example we have direct and indirect is there any easy way like a tree diagram which says for each of the raga you know, there is a... Show it to him. Kolaji Papro. So, in that, see the diagram below, to your left. What is two types, right? So, what is that? Kama Anuga and uh, Sambandha Anuga. Okay, those are? Kama Anuga. Anuga Bhakti. But in the Kama Anuga, two types are? Samboga Ichamai. Samboga Icha Samboga means union, Ichamai means desirous. Those who desire to have direct association with Krishna. Next. Tattat Bhava Ichamika. Tat Tat Bhava means to follow that. So it's an indirect. So all these are there. So that book is that's why I recommended this book to have this book. So that, that gives a crystal clear. I think we already sent the soft copy of this book to all the devotees, right? Yeah, so if you really want to read, then you should also go to the notes. That will be easier to organize. It's technical, there is no doubt about it. And it's condensed. So, I... Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. So, here is a question. You're all men. So if you try to love Krishna, won't you be called one of those people in San Francisco? 
I, they know what I'm talking about. Yesterday they were there. <laughs> so we'll read the next section. <laughs> this development of conjugal love for Krishna is not, ma not manifested in women only. The material body has nothing to do with spiritual loving affairs. A woman may develop an attitude for becoming a friend of Krishna and similarly a man may develop the feature of becoming a gopi in Vrindavana. How a devotee in the form of a man can decide to become a gopi is stated in the Padma Purana as follows. In days gone by there were many sages in Dadakaranya, Dandakaranya. Dandakaranya is the name of the forest where Lord Ramachandra lived after being banished by his father for 14 years. At that time, there were many advanced sages who were captivated by the beauty of Lord Ramachandra and who decided to become women in order to embrace the Lord. Later on, these sages appeared in Goloka Vrindavana when Krishna adventured himself there and they were born as gopis or girlfriends of Krishna. In this way, they attained the perfection of spiritual life. Thank you. Please go ahead. The story of the sages of Dandakaranya can be explained as follows. When Lord Ramachandra was residing in Dandakaranya, the sages who were engaged in devotional service there became attracted by his beauty and immediately thought of the gopis at Vrindavana, who enjoyed conjugal loving affection with Krishna. In this instance, it is, very, it is clear that the sages of Dandakaranya desired conjugal love in the manner of gopis. Although they were well aware of the Supreme Lord as both Krishna and Lam Lord Ramachandra, they knew that although Ramachandra was an ideal king and could not accept more than one wife, Lord Krishna being the full-fledged personality of Godhead could fulfill the desires of all of them in Vrindavana. These sages also concluded that the form of Lord Krishna is more attractive than that of Lord Ramachandra. And so they prayed to become gopis in their future lives to be associated with Krishna. Lord Ramachandra remained silent and his silence shows that he accepted the prayers of the sages. Thus they were blessed by the Lord Ramachandra to have association with Lord Krishna in their future lives. As a result of this benediction, they all took birth as women in the wombs of gopis at Gokula and as they desired in their previous lives, they enjoyed the company of Lord Krishna, who was present at that time in Gokula Vrindavan. The perfection of their human form of life was thus achieved by their generating a transcendental sentiment to share conjugal love with Lord Krishna. So, does that answer the question? So, it's nothing to do with material body. It's our spirit soul is loves Krishna in certain way and that rasa is completely spiritual, it's not material. So, as Srila Prabhupada writes, you could be in a woman's body but your eternal relationship is that you are a friend of Krishna. You will play with him like a boy in the forest of Vrindavan and your position could be that you are one of the gopis. The, the body completely continuously changes. Sometimes somebody takes a man's body, a woman's body, a dog's body, a cat's body, a demigod's body. The bodies keep on changing, but our eternal relationship within Krishna, for Krishna that never changes. And that's why when we perform pure devotional service to Krishna and we achieve the highest position of loving Krishna, our soul is completely satisfied. That this is what I have been hankering after. My, the service to my eternal Lord and Master that I have missed since trillions of lifetimes, I've just been in this material world. And the whole idea of, of loving relationship is to reach that platform. Reach, upon reaching that, nothing comes even slightest close. Even hearing that and aspiring for that, your mind becomes so focused that you don't want anything else. Forget the positions and the, the power in this material world even Lord Brahma's planet, even liberation, even so many other opulences, they, they seem nothing, they seem useless. The beauty is that the Lord is the source of all that opulences, for the devotee he doesn't give that many opulences. Because as a parent, 
if your child continuously wants to eat junk as a mother do you allow it or as a father do you allow it or continuously watch the child seems to be enjoying what's wrong with you why don't you allow but everybody knows in the long run it's extremely harmful is if so is krishna is our supreme father and mother and he is of the supreme intelligence doesn't he know what he is what is harmful for us and what is beneficial for us so if you approach him don't expect him to satisfy you like a child approaches child so they they are very clever they don't go to their parents they'll go to their grandparents <laughs> or their uncle or their aunt so demigods are like uncles and aunts and krishna is like mother and father sometimes <laughs> the aunt and uncle they, they want to see you happy they really don't care for your ultimate happiness <laughs> right so all right let's complete yes yes simanti nimath hey krishna baba so my question is um, as a neophyte devotee should i practice kind of like that mode like a raganuga bhakti or should i allow to practice no in the neophyte stage it's not recommended we just follow the rules and regulations then when we advance then we'll come to that platform it comes spontaneously it is not um, a time bound thing it's not a life bound thing in this life i'll get so a little bit on future then we'll get to go a little bit on how we get it you know that so raganuga takes on to bhava then we we'll see how bhava comes does bhava comes by sadhana by maturity of sadhana only does it come how does it come so all those questions will be answered so in the initial stages don't and don't encourage your friends to go to bhava ji who say that i know who you are you have you have your spiritual master and shri prabhupada also was very strict you know so he he, he was he was actually cutting off there is one um if you want to look it up there is one conversation in new vrindavan where one of the disciples was asking what about siddha pranali and prabhupada got really upset he said i gave you the method just follow it and everything will come about you don't have that qualification right now so a little bit answer to your question yes but also that's mean like who i know you are like a new for devotee our mood should be as a servant and our goal should be only serving krishna and your sadhana sadhana and seva even if there is no seva for instance you are not close by to a temple and you are traveling you are on a four month project say to somalia god forbid <laughs> <laughs> so at least your sadhana should be should be there your hearing and chanting should go on thank you bro thank you yes you are mentioning that krishna consciousness is a science and all these things which are mentioned by shri rupa goshami are uh, all the sciences of understanding krishna in relationship eternal in relation in eternal relationship but it seems like you know uh, those uh, dandakaranya rishis they came to know about krishna before he is bahuma lila so they know they had the knowledge even though they did not uh, uh, like have any proper source i should not say proper source i should say like like when we know the past times we have that attraction growing right but before that past times knowing that past times which was not manifested when they were with ramchandra they came to know about that goloka vrindavan that gopis are there these things so what kind of like you know shastra discusses these things before like like i see that in the shastra it says like krishna appears one day of manu sorry one day of brahma and uh, only that time people uh, lord chaitanya also appears and he gives that krishna's love by his preaching so can you please elaborate i think i did not articulate my question but i my question is like how they were attracted to krishna and <clears throat> so the supreme personality of god is the source of all rasas by looking at him one one's own relationship comes about for it is said um in shrimad bhagavatam 
that based on our relationship, Krishna is the reservoir of all rasas. The same Krishna attracted the heart and mind of Yashoda as Krishna's parent. The same Krishna attracted Radharani and his friends as their lover. And the same Krishna attracted the cowherd boys as their friend. It is one Krishna, a source of all rasas. Akhila Rasamrita Murti. It starts off, the nectar of devotion starts, uh, the Bhakti Rasamrita. Sindhu starts off with this invocation, Akhila Rasamrita Murti, which means that he is the personification of all rasas. So when the sages of Dandakaranya saw the Supreme Lord, their natural love or their natural position as his lovers came about. Lord Ram and Lord Krishna are not different. So that attraction came about, but Lord Ram said, not now, we got to wait. And when he came as Krishna, he said, then I will fulfill your desires. So it's the same Supreme Lord, but the attraction, their attraction came about not as Krishna. They wanted to enjoy with the Lord. But the Lord said, wait. And then they took birth and then he said, but, and it is said that he was silent. Lord, we want to enjoy with you. He was silent. He said, okay, then I'll fulfill your desire, but not now. That's how it happened. And Krishna comes for a mission and sometimes your desires might or might not fall in the purview of his mission. I mean, if he comes as Vamana or Kurma and then you say, I want to have a conjugal love. <laughs> wait, Baba. Yes, I come here with a specific mission. Or Varaha. We wait. So you see that he fulfills his desires, but according to the time of his choosing, not yours. There's a little bit help. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Please move up. Sit on the carpet. From uh, from Gajendra Moksham, where uh, Gajendra says, "Nastri na shando na puman na jantuhu." So, uh, Krishna is not neither man nor woman nor neuter or nor an animal. Or so you know the same quality is there because we are minuscule, you know, parts of Krishna. We have the same quality. So what whatever the quality of love we have to Him, it may it may manifest as a you know any any form. So, the question of man loving Krishna is, you know, as a gopi, is, I don't think, you know, I, I, that's, uh, that's what I think. I don't think that's something that's, uh, that comes under the material, you know, covering. So, I thought I would just mention that. Thank you. Nice point. Okay, you can continue. Yes. Please use the mic, Shama. Hare Krishna. I, I don't know how many online, online audiences. Are there any, uh, any online audiences? Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Go ahead with your question. So, with reference to uh, Krishna reciprocating with one's original mood. So, one uh, reference from Chaitanya Charitamrita is that of Mudari, uh, who yeah. wanted actually Hanuman, and so that came in that short Prahari Alila. Nice. Where actually he could see a tail he had and he was attracted to Lord Chaitanya but he could never give up. It's and say, same with Anupam also. Right, right. You know, right. He was a servant of Lord Ram. Right. But they were all uh, loving Lord Chaitanya but Lord Chaitanya also, uh, in presence of Lord Chaitanya their original melos came about which was… Mm, uh, mm, the mood of servitorship but, but the rest of the day was Lord Ram. Wonderful. Very nice point. Excellent. So you see how, that's nice. Okay. Online, anybody has any questions? We welcome the online devotees. Forgive me for not mentioning that earlier. Any questions online? Star six to unmute. All right. Yeah, Hari Bol? No, it's... it's. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were a ventriloquist. You can throw your voice into the sky. Uh, and then after that, you are Ashok. After that, yeah. uh, I just wanted to read out uh, a simple sentence from Waves of Devotion, which I felt was uh, very enlightening for me. Um, 
difference between material lust and spiritual lust selfish desire is the motivation of material lust selfless desire is the motivation of spiritual lust so material lust is like satisfying our own senses mm-hmm. whereas spiritual uh, lust is satisfying krishna's spiritual uh, senses yes. thank you so prabhu ji in this uh, paragraph we read about the sages um like uh, wanted to you know have conjugal relationship with lord ramachandra so are they in the spontaneous raganuka bhakti platform prabhu who the, the sages, sages? Oh, yes okay they are on that that should be the understanding yeah. right yeah. yeah thank you bro thank you <coughs> you had one more somebody mara go in the prayer okay so um next paragraph please conjugal love is divided into two classifications namely conjugal love as husband and wife and conjugal love as lover and beloved one who develops conjugal love for krishna as a wife is promoted to dwarka where the devotee becomes the queen of the lord one who develops conjugal love for krishna as a lover is promoted to goloka vrindavan to associate with the gopis and enjoy loving affairs with krishna there we should not carefully however that this conjugal love for krishna either as gopi or as a queen is not limited only to women even man even men can develop such sentiments as was evident as was evidenced by the sages of dandakaranya If someone simply desires conjugal love but does not follow in the footsteps of the gopis he is promoted to association with lord at dwarka thank you in the mahakura kurama purana it is stated great sages were who were the sons of fire gods rigidly followed the regulative principles in their desire to have a conjugal love of for krishna as such in their next lives they were able to associate with the lord the origin of all creation who is known as vasudeva or krishna and all of them got him as their husbands thank you so the raganuga bhakti this is again kamanuga and then sambandha roopa so this is kama roopa and then we discuss about the sambandha roopa so the next and then we can the devotees who are attracted to krishna as parents or as friends should follow in the footsteps of nanda maharaj or subhala respectively nanda maharaj is the foster father of krishna and out of all of the friends of krishna subhala is the most intimate in brajabhumi in the development of becoming either the father or friend of the lord there are two varieties one method is that one may try to become the father of the lord directly and the other is that one may follow nanda maharaj and cherish the ideal of being krishna's father out of these two the attempt to directly become the father of krishna is not recommended such a development can become polluted with mayavad or impersonal philosophy the mayavadis or monists think that they themselves are krishna and if one thinks that he himself has become nanda maharaj then his parental love will become contaminated with the mayavad philosophy the mayavad philosophical way of thinking is offensive and no offender can enter into the kingdom of god to associate with krishna thank you much in the skand purana there is a story of an old man residing in hastinapur capital of the kingdom of the pandus who desired krishna as his beloved son This old man was instructed by Narad to follow in the footsteps of Nanda Maharaj and thus he achieved success. There is a statement in the Narayana Vyuha Stava prayers that persons who are always engaged in thinking of Lord as their husband, friend, father or well-wisher are always worshipable by everyone. This spontaneous love for Krishna can be developed only by the special mercy of Krishna or his pure devotee. This process of devotional service is sometimes called 
Prushti Marga. Prushti means nourishing and Marga means path. Such development of sentimental nourish, nourishes devotional service to the highest standard. Thus, it is called the path of nourishment or Pushti Marga. The Vallabha Sampradaya, which belongs to the Vishnu Swami select sect of Vaishnava religion, worships Krishna in this Pushti Marga. Generally, devotee in Gujarat worship Bala Krishna under this heading of Pushti Marga. And the perfect devotee to read that from Gujarat. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> While staying over in the Gujarat, I never heard about that uh, in the details. So. At, at least now you can go back and tell. <laughs> so, questions? Any comments? We'll take a break, if not now. Then we come back and we discuss the very important topic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then we can we can we can do it. Yes, Haladara Rupa. Prabhu, I have a question on a like conjugal love section um, where we where we read like um, you know sages and anyone has uh, you know like uh, developed the conjugal love with Krishna, they have you know, like have to take a birth as uh, you know gopis or you know like. Um, so, how that goes is like take a birth in a pastime with Krishna or within a same Manu, um, you know, that devotee has to take a birth as a material body, as a, you know, go, you know like a woman, and then he can attend the conjugal law, how, how that process goes. So, when one achieves perfection in Vaidhi Sadhana, then you are naturally attracted to Krishna in the mood of Raganuga or spontaneous attraction. So spontaneous attraction is that you always like to, based on your relationship with Krishna, then you see Krishna like that. You see Krishna as your lover or as your friend or as your child or as your master. Um, so when those sentiments become stronger and stronger, then Krishna actually places you in one of under one of his eternally liberated souls. And Rupa and uh, Sanatan Goswami mentions that Krishna's pastimes are eternal. As we speak in some, in some part of the material world, Krishna's pastimes are going on. And you will be promoted to that place where Krishna's pastimes are going on within this material world. Serve under his devotee's care and attention. And then when you get sufficient practice like that, then you, are, you go back to the spiritual world, not directly one or zero. Zero, one. It doesn't work like that. So that is, in summary, the gist. Yeah, because when we do sadhana, then, we, then our, our nourishment comes about. It, it, and then, a prop, then as the mood develops, then you get appropriate body, appropriate ornaments, appropriate service, appropriate skills. Because some, some gopis are expert at musical instruments. Some gopis are expert at um, being soft, shringara or decorating. Some gopis are expert at cooking. Some gopis are expert at making flower garlands or preparations for Radha and Krishna. So there are varieties of services and then you, you will see Krishna like that. You want to serve Krishna like that. But it, 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 the point I am try, trying to make is, it manifests rather than you trying to seek for it. That's a big difference. Other questions? So we'll, if not, then we'll take a break. It's uh, 2.37. So we still have three more chapters to go. The faster you come back, the better it is. So 2.45 or 2.47, yeah. All right. Thank you.
అమెజాన్ లో ఉంది నేను అఫ్ కోర్స్ అండ్ ఇంకోటి నేను మీకు ఐ డోంట్ నో ఐ లెట్ మీ ఇంట్లో ఇఫ్ దర్ ఇస్ అన్ ఎక్స్ట్రా కాపీ దెన్ ఐ గెట్ ఇట్ ఫ్రీ బట్ ఐమ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు గో హోమ్ అండ్ సీ ఇంట్లో ఐ థింక్ ఐ ఆల్ గేవ్ అవే ఆల్ ద ఎక్స్ట్రా కాపీస్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఫ్యూ there is uh, for other books i wrote notes but for this i didn't write because there is already notes in the form of this book can you get started <coughs> um i'm after the class can we get started <coughs> so the chapter 17 and 18 talk about bhava bhakti or ecstatic love for krishna and uh, srila prabhupad 
has um, translated bhava bhakti as ecstatic love and prema bhakti as devotional service and pure love of godhead so let's do that portion um i'll just read till the devotees come back so that they can take their seats they'll read from the second paragraph to clarify in the previous chapters the symptoms of devotional service were explained along with the instructions as to how we may execute devotional service with our present senses and gradually rise to the platform of ecstasy in spontaneous love and the two kinds of devotional service namely devotional service through regulative principles and through spontaneous love were discussed devotional service through regulative principles the sanskrit name is vaidhi sadhana bhakti yes and devotional service through spontaneous love is raganuga bhakti thank you within the stage of the regulative principles of devotional service there are two divisions namely executive and effective this effective portion of devotional service is called bhava or ecstasy in this connection there is a statement in the tantras that ecstasy is the first symptom of pure love of personality of god and in that stage one sometimes is found shedding tears or shivering so prema or bhava is the first stage of prema just like a ray of sunshine it gives indication of the sun as a whole bhava gives rise is like the preliminary stage of prema and in sanskrit sometimes bhava is also called rati rati and bhava are the same strictly speaking rati is a relationship with krishna and when you experience that emotion of relationship with krishna that is called rasa so those are the technical terms of that so don't get confused so sometimes bhava is also called rati so they are interchangeably used in this connection and it is mentioned that in the bhava stage there is slight manifestation of love of god it's quality and also the time wise a quantity or the time wise it's limited so somebody might be crying um those who are in actual bhava platform they might be crying and uh, there could be shivering there could be goosebumps in their body but it's manifested in a minute quantity for few seconds it's not it's not there persistently they are one symptom of bhava um and that's why let's continue with that not always are these symptoms manifest but occasionally, occasionally that's the word for it when king ambarish was put into difficulty by durvasa he began to think of the lotus feet of the lord and thus there were some changes in his body and tears were falling from his eyes these symptoms are activities of ecstasy they are visible in the shivering of the body and shedding of the tears after outward appearance of these ecstatic symptoms they stay within the mind and continuation of ecstasy is called samadhi the stage of appreciation becomes the cause of future exchanges of loving affairs to krishna now the question comes is how can one get bhava bhakti and rupa goswami writes there are two ways one is the perfection of sadhana the second thing is by the mercy of krishna or his devotees he says oh sweet right we can just expect the mercy of devotees or krishna i don't have to do my sadhana <laughs> well it is uh okay uh, can we go to in special cases so that will be um yeah in correct 
in special cases of course there is a special favor from krishna and although we always expect that we should not sit idly and simply wait for krishna's special mercy the regular duties must be performed it is just as when sometimes it is found that a person who never attended school or college may be recognized as a great scholar or an honorary degree from a great university may be offered to him but this does not mean that one should avoid school and expect to be automatically receiving an honorary degree from some university similarly one should devoutly execute the regulative principles of devotional service and at the same time hope for krishna's favor or for his devotee's favor so bhava bhakti is attained either by the perfection of sadhana and or by krishna's mercy or his devotees and rupa goswami writes the second case is rare the former case is more common meaning perfection through sadhana because you remember what are the six qualities of pure devotional service sandhananda visheshana shri krishna shri moksha moksha laguta krita so there are six symptoms and what is the second one we said okay after shubhada what mokshata lagrata krita is make it it says derives the concept of liberation but sudurlabha is very rarely achieved what why did we say it is rarely achieved one thing is because of two reasons you cannot get it by any pious activities the second thing is krishna is is not very specific so if you wait for krishna's mercy baba ji <laughs> you do your activities at the same time expect krishna's mercy without krishna's mercy you won't get love of god there is no doubt about it but having said that god you give me whenever you give me that's what people say whenever god wants me i'll come to the temple then you know or whenever you know yeah, anyways never mind so that 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 argument shila prabhu passes is don't do it bhava it's better you expect it so the that is the highlight that it goes and the chapter is divided into uh, how the sadhana the stage of sadhana or perfection through sadhana is given by naradas example when he was as we know he was there for four months he he served the devotees right the bhakti vedantas and it is said that there was a change in his heart and he achieved perfection um that is mentioned as a sadhana or or a stage of um of performing one's page 132 so if you okay that's perfect stay right there an example who is supposed to read actually prabhu if you do i'll read it because at least i want to do a cherry pick reading here not go through the whole thing so an example of rising to the stage of ecstatic love by executing regulative principles of devotional service is given in the life story of narada which is described to vyasadev in shrimad bhagavatam so we we read that bhava is achieved through sadhana bhakti and this is the example and um the next paragraph they, these are practical examples okay um ecstatic love in association of pure devotees so that is used and then for the lord or his pure devotees there are three ways of achieving it one is through glance one is through the heartfelt um there is blessings through words the lord comes and blesses the other example is through heart and the other example is through glance there are three examples that are mentioned here okay P- devotees are confused so we will read um okay so go to the paragraph sometimes please go a little more okay so okay now you can start reading jai kanai prabhu who are is okay, you can complete the paragraph complete Sometimes however it is found that without undergoing any devotional process one all of a sudden develops devotion for Lord Krishna 
This sudden development of devotional attitude in a person must be understood as a special mercy of, Krish of Krishna or his devotee. The apparently accidental development of ecstatic feeling through the causeless mercy of Krishna can be divided into three groups. Simply by speaking, simply by glancing, and simply by good wishes. Okay. So, simply by speaking, it is mentioned in the next paragraph. In the Naradiya Puran, there is a statement about development of ecstatic love simply by speaking. Lord Krishna said to Narada, O best of the Brahmanas, I wish that you may develop an alloyed devotional service to me, which is full of transcendental bliss and all auspiciousness. The next is glancing. Go ahead. In the Skanda Puran, there is a statement about developing ecstatic love toward Krishna simply by glancing. It is stated there, when the inhabitants of Jangala province saw the personality of Godhead, Krishna, they were so stricken with feeling that they could not withdraw their glance from him. Heartfelt wishes. As far as heartfelt wishes are concerned, there is a statement in the Shuka Samhita where Narada tells Srila Vyasadeva, you have a son who is the greatest devotee of the personality of Godhead and I can observe that without any following of the regulatory principles of devotional service. He is already enriched with the many of the symptoms achieved by the execution of devotional service after many, many births. So, thank you. So, so again, bhava is achieved through ways, through perfection of sadhana and through uh, mercy of Krishna or his devotees. And that is also divided into three characteristics that is mentioned. Um, <clears throat> And, sorry, uh, the eighteenth chapter, it talks about those who are in bhava stage, you know, there are nine characteristics of those who are in bhava stage, that is, uh, who is supposed to read next, back to, okay, please. You can read uh, three qualities, then, or you can read all the nine qualities, it's not much. All the nine qualities you can read. Lord Swami next describes the characteristics of a person who has actually developed in ecstatic love for Krishna. The characteristics are as follows. He, first one, he is always anxious to utilize his time in the devotional service of the Lord. He does not like to be idle. He wants service always, 24 hours a day. Deviation. Second, he is always reserved and preservant. Third, he is always detached from all material attraction. Fourth, he does not long for any material respect in return for his activities. Fifth, he is always certain that Krishna will bestow his mercy upon him. Sixth, he is always very eager to serve the Lord faithfully. Seven, he is very much attached to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Eight, he is always eager to describe the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Nine, he is very pleased to live in a place where the Lord's pastimes are performed. Example, Madhura, Vrindavana, Dwarka. So here are the qualities of those who are in bhava and the next um, next um, pages Shila Rupa Goswami defines each of those terms and then backs up with the scriptures from Shastra describing those. Um, Alright. The, the uh, that you can read and that you can understand. But the most important point is this bhava has also two kinds of imitation. When when you find in the temple when there is an advanced devotee who is either singing or dancing, and you'll see a lot of devotees also dancing. And then many people might say, "Oh, when I was in the temple, I was feeling that that emotion, you know, that love for Krishna." But when I come out, 
then you can fill in the blanks. I, uh. So what is this? Is this real? Is this some sort of fake? Is it shadow? Dream? What do you call that fleeting feeling that you felt? Yeah, that we'll discuss. Um, <clears throat> First of all, Srila Rupa Goswami, um, let's go start reading from, it is said, uh, after perseverance, go through all those things, yes Prabhu, come down, no, it's still more, yes, so I forgot to ask, is there anybody online who wants to read this paragraph? Okay, so Simantini Mataji, everybody got a chance, right? Okay, Simantini Mataji, again you can start. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, this is Vinayak. Hey, Hare Krishna, Vinayak Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Please go ahead. I can read if you want. Yes, please read that paragraph. Uh, which paragraph, Prabhu? Uh, is, it, one. is it projected on the screen where it is said starting by, it is said by Rupa Goswami? Okay, yeah. Uh, it is said by Rupa Goswami that the attachment exhibited by pure devotees for Krishna cannot possibly be perfected in the hearts of fruity workers, karmis, or mental speculators because such attachment in pure Krishna consciousness is very rare and not possible to achieve even for many liberated persons. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, liberation from material contamination is the stage at which devotion service can be achieved. For a person who simply wants to have liberation and to merge into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, attachment to Krishna is not possible to acquire. This attachment is very confidentially kept by Krishna and is bestowed only upon pure devotees. Even ordinary devotees cannot have such pure attachment for Krishna. Therefore, how is it possible for success to be achieved by persons whose hearts are contaminated by the actions and reactions of fruitive activities by various types of mental speculation. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else online wants to give it a shot? You have to press star six to unmute. Okay. Go ahead, Matthew. Oh, you didn't get a chance? Okay, go. Please read. Yes. There are so there are many so-called devotees who artificially think of Krishna's pastimes known as Astak Liya Leela. Sometimes one may Hare artificially Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is uh, Karunya Shakti. I'd like to read. Can you repeat the name, Mataji? I'm so sorry. If, huh? Karuna Shakti. Karuna Shakti, Mataji. Hari Bol. Thank you. Thank Hari you for Bol. dialing in from San Diego. San Clemente, but close. Yeah. Thank you. What's that? There are, there are so many so-called devotees who sorry. artificially no, think of Krishna's pastime known as Asta Kaliya, Kaliya Lila. Sometimes one may artificially imitate these, pretending that Krishna is talking with him in the form of a boy. Or else one may pretend that Radharani and Krishna both have come to him and are talking with him. Such characteristics are sometimes exhibited by the impersonalist class of men, and they may captivate some innocent persons who have no knowledge in the science of devotional service. However, as, some, as soon as an experienced devotee sees all these characters, he can immediately evaluate such rascaldom. If such a pretender is sometimes seen possessing imitative attachment to Krishna, that will not be accepted as real attachment. It may be said, however, that such attachment gives the pretender 
that he may eventually rise onto the actual platform of pure devotional service. Thank you. So, uh, Sonia Mataji, you can read the next paragraph, and then we can discuss a little bit, and then go ahead. Uh, this imitative attachment can be divided into two headings, namely shadow attachment and para transcendental attachment. If someone without undergoing the regulative principles of devotional service or without being guided by a bona fide spiritual master shows such imitative attachment, shadow attachment. Sometimes it is found that a person actually attached to material enjoyment or salvation has the good fortune to associate with pure devotees while they are engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. By the good grace of the Lord, one may also cooperate, join in the chanting. At that time, simply by the association of such pure devotees, the moon-like rays from their hearts reflect on him. And by the influence of pure devotees, he may show some likeness of attachment caused by inquisitiveness, but this is And if the manifestation of such shadow attachment, one feels the disappearance of all material pangs, then it is called para attachment. Thank you. So, the bhava, when it is two types, two types of imitation. So when the one is called the chaya, the other is called pratibhimba. Means, so chaya is a shadow attachment and pratibhimba is, in this case Srila Prabhupada used the word para, which is, so the shadow that your motives to have that, for example, you want to be seen. Some, when there is a famous devotee, uh, an advanced devotee, everybody wants to be seen or everybody wants to be heard, or something like that. So if your motive is just to partake in that devotee's glories, just to be known, then that is more of a shadow, shadowy reflection. And um, the pratibhimba, or, or the mirror kind of attraction, sorry, reflective pratibhimba, and uh, chaya is shadow. So pratibhimba is like that, which has corrupt, which has some personal motives and uh, shadow attachment it's not that intense because pratibhimba intense attachment is very intense you really like people you will not even know who is an advanced who is not everybody is jumping like that in, for example in kirtan you think everybody is advanced but in the uh, the pratibhimba uh, the chaya attachment then the intensity is less but the motives are not as as strong, just more curious. There is one, there is other places is strong motives to be something, whereas this one, I'm curious, okay, you know, let me also do it. He's jumping, let me also, but why are these people jumping? I don't know, let us try. <laughs> that is kind of, you know, that those are two different types of bhava that can be reflected. So sometimes when you do that in the temple and you are like dancing and all, and you feel joy, it's the reflection of the pure devotee that is just being manifest in the heart. And that is especially true when you go to Dham and when you go to other places and you can feel that, feel that. So, um, what else? The, there is one point though, one serious point. Even then the next passage describes how this imitative attachment can be actually converted to genuine bhav by mercy of Krishna or his pure devotees. That's the first thing. The second thing or the most dangerous thing is that can, if you are on a stage of bhava, can you ever fall down? Or can it ever be taken away from you? Yes? Who said yes? Excellent. If offenses are committed. Um, the, here it's, Bharat Maharaj's example is offenses were, were committed, but offense against a pure devotee makes that genuine bhava into imitative bhava. You may think you will still have bhava, but because you are offending devotees, that bhava is just presenting itself to you as a reflection. 
so even at the stage of bhava, if you offend devotees, then then you lose it. Um, a sense of superiority. Chitra Ketu, he was on the platform of power. Or neglect, Maharaj Bharat. They were on the platform of Bhava, yet they, they had to undergo minor rectification. But the beauty is that even though they became Ritrasura and even though he took the body of a deer, he had the mercy of the Lord to remember and repent and get a chance to progress. Yes, Aditya Prabhu. So, Prabhuji, out of this, um, uh, the imitative attachment, uh, does that come after all the uh, nine stages of devotion, uh, I mean, when, as one progresses, or is it just like separately? It sometimes can be separate. Uh, so, if it is not separate, then uh, one has gone through the stages of Nista and then Ruchi and all those things. So, how after or get, going through all those stages, one can develop some kind of immediate attachment? Uh, so, one may seems. not be there. One may not genuinely be there. One may have just been having some faith. See, wh when do you come to temple to experience Bhava? Assuming there is a Bhava Grahi devotee in the temple, advanced devotee, and you somehow come to the temple because you have Shraddha. That brought you to the temple, but you don't have any other stages, Anartha Nivritti and all that. So you might experience a little bit. Okay, so this is, uh, one does not fall into an imitative attachment, like shadow attachment, after one goes through um, no. Nishta. After you genu genuinely get Bhava, it sustains. One way to know, how do I know, is whether that feeling of Bhava remains or it goes away. If it goes away, then it's just imitative. But if it stays strongly, then it is genuine. Another question I had is, uh, in the various stages that we that one goes through, is there any fixed demarcation? For example, Anarthanivriti and then Nishta, is it like uh, one is finished with Anarthanivriti, then goes into Nishta, or there's a grey jo zone in between? For example, one can be both in bhava and anartha nivritti, no sorry, um, nishtha and anartha nivritti at the same time. Is it possible or? It is possible, but the traces of anartha nivritti are so small that they overshadow and they become, they consume your devotion if you offend. Even till the stage of bhava, the fact is that you can fall there is the small tendency of anartha nivritti. But the anartha nivritti is like an ocean in the front. It becomes like really small compared to your ocean of devotional activities. It doesn't make a difference. But they are lurking around. So, only in stage of prema, no anartha nivritti. Till bhava it is there. Yeah, yes. Vijay, are you enrolled for Bhakti Shastri? Yes, bro. Wow, well, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the last class. Yes, go ahead. So, uh, related to that, um, so in the stage, uh, in the stages from Shraddha to Bhava, where does the greed of our Raganuga happens? Like, is it hap does it happen at the Bhava stage, or it be it's before, or how does that work? You have to repeat the question. I didn't get it. So, from the stages from uh, uh, Shraddha to Bhava, somewhere the um, uh, regulatory principles of devotional service has to change into sp spontaneous devotional service. So, when does that happen? Does it happen at the stage of Bhava or it, does it happen before? So, it, no, it, their picture is wrong. So, basically, I wish I had a pen and paper on that easel. The Bhava is also the when we read the definition, let's go back. I think the only way I can do justice is to go back.
So, uh, page 131. So, Sridhar Prabhu, it will be second paragraph of 17th chapter. Seventeenth chapter. Second paragraph. To clarify, in the previous chapters, the symptoms of devotional service were explained along with instructions as to how, may we, how we may execute devotional service with our present senses and gradually rise to the platform of ecstasy in spontaneous love. And the two kinds of devotional service, namely devotional service through principles and through spontaneous love were discussed. Within the stage of regulative principles of devotional service, there are two divisions, namely executive and effective. This effective portion of devotional service is called bhava or ecstasy. So the point here, Srila Rupa Goswami and Prabhupada are making, sadhana can lead to bhava. And there is, on the side, there is raganuga bhakti. So raganuga bhakti is sometimes independent. We read about how raganuga bhakti can be given uh, by the devotees, right? Did we read that? Yes. So, Raganuga can come spontaneous, but Bhava is a part of why the sadhana and the perfection of sadhana can lead to Bhava. Does that answer your question? So, uh, so one has to take a separate path for practicing Raganuga and achieve Bhava? So, no, ra no, Bhava, Raganuga and Bhava are the stepping stone. So, you are saying why the Raganuga Bhava and Prema. You are thinking like that? Yes. No. So, Vaidhi can lead to Bhava. Yes. And Vaidhi can lead to Raganuga. And they both can lead to Bhava. You see the point? Yes. So, the Vaidhi leading to Raganuga leading to Bhava. So, like, when that… that are no switch. There is no switch. <laughs> there is no switch. That is my point. Vaidhi… Raganuga includes Vaidhi. We… You came late to the class, so did you come to that point where we discussed internal and external? Internal practice and an external practice? No. Okay. So you read that. And I had requested the devotees to come for the first few classes. They were very important foundational classes. So, so you read that, then you will realize it. So, um, then you, you will go, you will realize that even though the Raganuga stage, you will still perform sadhana because externally you will do something, internally you meditate on Krishna on some other platform. So, there is no switch. Raganuga includes this. The gopis of Vrindavan, are you chanting Hare Krishna? I am chanting. Do the gopis chant Krishna's name? They, they do chant Krishna's names. But that's my point. The name of Krishna is universally applicable right from the lowest. It is the same name that's not changed. But the way you perceive the name changes. So they meditate. Con throughout the day they are doing, churning their butter. But all they are doing is thinking of Krishna's activities and glorifying Krishna. So that doesn't change even on the highest level. So the the flavor changes, but the act doesn't change. So in the same way, in the sadhana stage, all the activities remain, but they take a different platform. And the other aspect is on the Raganuga stage, as we also discussed, of Gadadhar Pandit and Haridas Thakur, that the activities change. In the sadhana stage, you cannot say to Gurudev, I take a vow to read two hours of Bhagavatam daily, I don't want to do sixteen rounds. I can't take, a, everybody has to chant 16 rounds. But what if I'm attracted to Bhagavatam? At the Raganuga stage, that comes about. It becomes spontaneous. You may not have to chant 16 rounds. But you are absorbed in reading Bhagavatam. Or like Haridas Thakur, you are just absorbed in chanting the holy names of Krishna. So, Raganuga is a spontaneous attraction to Krishna, devoid of rules. But the platform doesn't change. So, there is no question of switch. Is that clear, Vijay Prabhu? Does that answer your question a bit? Where well, we can take it offline. 
because we do have just exactly 25 minutes or 35 minutes, and then we have to cover one more. Welcome, Radha Venkatro. So happy to see you. Anyways, okay. Other questions? Bhava? So Bhava, how Bhava comes about? What are the different types of Bhava? What is shadow? What is imitative Bhava? And how, how, what is the danger of how the Bhava can be destroyed? Yes, Aditya Prabhu. So Prabhuji, what, how is the relationship with one spiritual master, uh, uh, how does that, how is it that in relation with when one develops one's, um, one's natural position with resp uh, in the spiritual world? So how is that different or um, how is that defined? So could you shed some light on that? How do you, can you please repeat the question? So, um, uh, one's own natural position and one's spiritual the relationship between the spiritual master and disciple is always on the level of uh, servant and master relationship. So the disciple is always a servant. So what happens when the spiritual master, maybe, for example, they may have the same like uh, sakhas of Krishna. So it, it might be the same. So how does that get differentiated? The relationship that spiritual has with Krishna is not imposed on the disciple. I'll give an example. Mahaprabhu, what was he in primarily in mood with Krishna? Did other followers of Mahaprabhu only in conjugal love? He came, he came to give the four types of rasas. So, a spiritual master might take on the role of preaching and the disciples might not share in the same rasa. I'll give another example. Narada, he has many disciples who don't share the same relationship as Narada. Prahlad was a disciple of Narada or not? What is Prahlad's rasa with Krishna? Shanta. Shantaras. So, but Narada himself is not in the Shantaras. So, the whole idea of a spiritual master, they, because spiritual master is an external manifestation of Krishna, he just canvases on behalf of Krishna and initiates. The disciple, based on his or her perfection, have some other, some other relationship with Krishna. So it's not imposed. It's not a one-on-one -on -one relation, one-on-one -on -one mapping kind of thing. Does that a little bit answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Does that satisfy Aditya Prabhu? Yeah. But it is also said like if the Guru Maharaj, if the spiritual master is in, not in a higher rasa, then the disciple is not eligible to enter into that higher rasa. You have to get that from someone who is. If you are in Madhira Rasa, you can give Dasiras, Sakharas. But if you are yourself with Sakharas, you cannot give your disciple that Madhira Rasa. That is the point, though. When the disciple and the spiritual master meet, there is no contract <laughs> legally binding. A spiritual master merely gives the sadhana or the mantra diksha. He doesn't say that you are this. That manifestation, I am just an agent of giving you Krishna. How your relationship with Krishna develops, that is something I don't know. I, have a, I don't have to, I, I really want to know the source of that statement. That if you are in the Madhuri era, you know, you are... Or if, if I am a Sakya, hmm. then my disciple can never become a 
stated in the past times of Shamananda Pandit because he was disciple of Vridha Chaitanya Das and he was one of the you know disciple of uh, Ganga Das Pandit, Dadas Gopal. So he was in the mode of Dasiras. But he knew that Shamananda Pandit is very inclined to Madhuras and he has that inclination. So he put him under the shelter of Jiva Goswami who was himself in the Madhuras. So he then Ah, okay. Him. That explains because that's at a very advanced level, not on the sadhana stage. So, you're right. In the Ragatmika stage, if somebody approaches wanting to serve Krishna like that, then if I am serving as in the Madhurya stage, then I really can't train a person who wants to be a Dasya. That will be like a mixture, right? So, in the advanced stages, maybe it is true. But at this point, I have not heard anywhere where it is already pre-decided and therefore I can't accept. You get the point, right? So when we come from the conditioned state, we really don't consider those, those criteria. We don't have a set of Madhya Rasa Gurus in ISKCON and a Dasya Rasa Gurus in ISKCON and a Sakya. So first figure out where you fit in Krishna's pastimes and then approach. It won't work. The, the, the natural rasa will come about and then you can take. The other point, does your, um, when, yeah, no, that's not the right example. But in the advanced stages, then you, you, then you are slotted, then you go, then you, this is the Madhuraras, and then you know, I'll serve with, with those devotees who are already situated. Then I have to take again shelter of them. That is more of an advanced stage. So that is not on the sadhana stage. Does that a little bit answer your question? Yeah, it's oh, Samananda Pandit stage, they are like li li little, little there. I want to say, like, same with Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He mm -hmm. got that, you know, that process of devotional service from Jagannathash Babaji Bharaj yeah, instead of his that's the Pranali, right? Yeah, yeah there, there is a bona fide, and then the, and then the, yes. So let's not, you know, get into the, that, that stage right now. Otherwise, people will, you know, first let me find out who I am. I found out who I am, which is, which is completely wrong. Then who are you? <laughs> then I'll take it. <laughs> Interesting. Very nice question. I like it. Um, yes. Yes. Wondering. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I was wondering if uh, these ecstatic love, the symptoms that the advanced devotees have, is it not 24-7 or like they have it for a couple of hours and then it goes because when they are in that, uh, that's what I am assuming that they are in that uh, mode, then there's, I don't think that they can have the um, uh, chance of falling down. But when they are out of it, then they can. By this time, Matthew, you should have realized I'm a total useless fool <laughs> who can't understand fast. Slowly tell your question. <laughs> uh, I was thinking that uh, the ecstatic symptoms that of the ecstatic love that a uh, advanced devotee uh, under like has is it limited like maybe for a couple of hours and then because having these symptoms then I don't think that they have the chance of falling down only when they are out of that, those uh, symptoms then they can think, okay, I am superior, and then uh, they do some, some kind of, of an offense and then fall down. Again, coming back to the same question, like how advanced devotees can commit offenses that they will fall down when they are thinking like that of Krishna. Usually when you are thinking of 24 by 7, you are thinking of Krishna. Then how can you commit offenses when you are thinking of Krishna 24 by 7? And only when you are out of it can you commit offenses and you can fall down. Is my understanding right? The bhava stage is not 24 by 7. Even if it is 24 by 7, 24 by 7 by 0 0.2. When I say 0 0.2, 0 0.2 percent of your mind might be absorbed, or 0.8 percent, 0.9 percent of your mind is absorbed. In the prema stage, your mind becomes so condensed with thoughts of Krishna, the other thought won't even enter your mind. Just like if, 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 if a pipe is full, is completely blocked with like something, 
then the water, if you try to enter it, not a drop of water will enter the pipe. So similarly, mind becomes so condensed with, with love of Krishna in the stage of prema that no other thought enters that mind. But till that stage, it is not 100%. It's 99%, 98%. Always that scope. And as, as coming to Prabhu about, you know, anartha nivritti and bhava, you know, there could be slight traces of anartha nivritti that are lurking around that might cause offenses. Um, it's not, it's not easy to get prema. It's not easy. What emotions we experience is not prema. At least I can tell for myself. Somebody raise the hand. Yes, Jake and I Prabhu. So Prabhu, by uh, categorization, we hear that you know, uh, it's it seems like an elevation, like from lower to higher. Shanta to Prema, right? But then for for the souls that are basically categorized for a particular rasa or they feel complete satisfaction within that one rasa. So it's more of a category or there is these rasas are really like lower to better and higher. Uh, and uh, the second part question is like if that is the the uh, that is the ladder, then does like somebody who attains shanta is hankering for prema, or he is completely satisfied within shanta? I mean that way that that ladder doesn't stand. I mean it, it becomes like all these five rasas are then complete in themselves, and you will feel like hundred percent satisfied wherever your gana is. It's a question or a point? I don't no, know. I'm just asking. Okay. Vijay Prabhu, tell me the answer for that. So, I didn't fully understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, I like it. You're being very <laughs> candid. Um, uh, Sridhar Prabhu. Introduction to Bhagavatam, please. I introduction. So go to Bhagavatam. We have 20 more minutes. If you don't discuss the exam now, we won't discuss forever. It will be on July 10th, so mind you. <laughs> See, that is nice. Uh, okay, yes. Let's let's go. Uh, you have to go all the way down. Oh, uh, past times of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, maybe. Uh, no, 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 no. Come, come down all the way, Prabhuji. All the way down. All the way, yeah, just pull it all the way down. Go up. Go up, go up. Go up, go up. Go. No, no, stop there, stop there, stop there. Little, little. Go. So, it, so it's go, go up more. Devotional service up or down? How do you say? What do you say? Okay, so somebody says down, somebody says. I'm confused, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> Down. Pure devotional service. Yeah, devotional service is divided into two. Yeah, go ahead. Devotional service is conducted under two categories, namely spontaneous. No. And then, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so the self realization stage. Just after liberation from material bondage is called Shanta. Then go ahead. After that, there is development of transcendental knowledge and then Dasya. Go ahead. Development of Dasya, Sakya. Above this stage is parental affection, Vatsalya. And then go ahead. Above this stage is the stage of conjugal love. And if you go down a little bit more. Um, pap, pam. Where is it written? The answer I wanted to bring up, the answer, short answer, 
that each devotee who is in a particular stage thinks that stage is highest. The Prahlad Maharaj doesn't want to be a gopi in Vrindavan because his stage is perfect. Hanumanji is very happy being the servant of Lord Ram. That's his position and he doesn't think of anything else. So each stage that the devotee thinks this is perfect, this is highest. But Srila Rupa Goswami says that objectively if you consider then the stage of conjugal love is the highest for Krishna. So that is the, that is the thing. Yes, we'll talk about exam. <laughs> I, I was I was just pulling your leg, Ashokro. I know that you had something else. So, Prabhu, when when of these five stages we consider as a pure devotee, all, all of them, right? So that means, are they in prema bhakti or? Yes, they are in prema bhakti. Prema is the basis is the least so common denominator. Before prema, they are not pure devotees, right? Is that true statement? Bhava, like bhava stage. Bhava stage, they are not pure. Of course, they are pure devotion service, but there is always a chance of falling offenses. In fact, it's, you know, Adav Shraddha, Tatav Sadhu Sangha, after Anartha Nivriti, we learned that Rupa Goswami, Srila Prabhupada writes, you can actually go to Vrindavan and be a Raganuga. Well. So, during bhava, bhava stage, do they not uproot all their bija? It's all gone, but there is a lingering prarabdha, trace. Prarabdha, prarabdha, everything is gone, right? You take, okay, I'll give an example. You take a drop of blue ink and throw it into Pacific Ocean. Do you see that? It's of no consequence, right? It's still a Pacific Ocean. That drop is still there in the ocean. So, pure devotion to Krishna is completely like that. On the bhava stage, like an ocean. There is the tr- anartha nevriti is just small trace. At any time it can happen. So, that's so the although way. this four bija and everything is all taken out, still the nevriti might stay in uh, bhava stage probably? Yeah, but there is a caveat though. I'll add a caveat. Mm-hmm. Actually, we don't have time. Probably we'll discuss later. What's the question? I'm sorry. So during bhava stage, if if this prarabdha karma, bija, and uh, avigna, all those four are removed, uh, first of all, is it removed in bhava stage or completely destroyed? So when all these things are completely destroyed, when the bija is destroyed, right, the intention of doing mistake or uh, offense is taken away, right? Then how can somebody fall at that stage? I have a question. Was Parikshit Maharaj an exalted devotee of the Lord? Yes. Really? You take a snake and throw it, put it around this. Why? Was Chitraketu on Bhava or not? What made you insult Lord Shiva? You know the story? Chitraketu was flying in the airplane. Parvati was sitting on the lap of Lord Shiva. He says, look at these people. And Parati looked at him and says, you, you, you dare criticize Lord Shiva, I am going to curse you. It is not that they fell down. What was their attitude after they fell down? That constitutes in Bhava stage. Each of these cases, thank you. you know, good that you cursed me. So, and it can happen under the will of Sometimes the Lord does to glorify his own devotees. In fact, Parishit Maharaj, it's mentioned again by Srila Prabhupada in the purports that it was Lord's plan. Sometimes the Lord uses you. Really, Arjuna? Crying in battlefield? Just before it was about to start? I don't want to fight like, like, like he was afraid, scared, sentimental, weak. He was. But Krishna put him under that situation. So sometimes it's it might be apparently they are doing some fault, but it is Krishna. In the case of Bharat Maharaj, Prabhupada writes, Krishna just did to show as an example. So it's not one and the same. In the stage of bhava, which is a high stage, you are completely under control of Krishna. And if Krishna can protect the most neophyte of the devotees, those who are on bhava, he is not. 
he is like getting envious, like Indra, you know, he is coming in bhava stage, you know, let me do something. <laughs> no. So, that's the point. And the other example is, till we reach prema, there is always that danger. For, this, for the, those who are on the path of devotion, that is always there in the back. Is that good enough? Thank you, Prabhu.